We need the skies clear for some stargazing because an asteroid is blazing across the universe right towards Earth. It really is. It's about half the size of a football field. So imagine how big that is. It will skim Earth's atmosphere on Friday. And I spoke to U of A professor Dante Loretta, and he tells me that while the space object will get pretty close, it's not time to count down to doomsday. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Loretta. You know, I got to ask you, we hear asteroid heading towards uh, or close to Earth. That, that's kind of scary. What are we looking at here for next Friday? Yeah, so on Friday, uh, February 15th, a object about 150 feet in diameter will safely uh, fly very close to the Earth. Okay, that sounds, you know, everybody keeps calling it small, but that sounds kind of big. Can you give us a comparison? Uh, about the size of a football stadium. <laughs> scary stuff. Should we be worried? Uh, we should not be worried. We have the orbit of this thing determined very precisely and it's going to pass within about 17,000 miles of the Earth, uh, which is exciting because it's coming inside the orbit of some of our communication satellites, but the Earth is safe, uh, the space station is safe, and all of our satellites are safe. Does this happen often? Do we see asteroids of this magnitude and just asteroids in general come this close to our Earth? Uh, no, this is a record-breaking event. This is the first time we've been able to predict an object of this size coming this close to the Earth. We do know of over 9,000 near-Earth asteroids that we keep track of. How long have you guys been tracking this? Uh, this object was discovered almost a year ago in early 2012. So what does this mean for you guys, for NASA, for research? Uh, what are we looking at here? Uh, Near-Earth objects are very exciting um, objects to study for science reasons. They're remnants from the early solar system. They basically record the formation of the Earth and the formation of the planets. And so we study them to understand the earliest history of our solar system. So uh, for Friday's event, what is it that you guys are going to be doing uh, to kind of track this as it passes the Earth? Right. So the close approach will occur about uh, 2.30 Eastern or 12.30 uh, local Arizona time in the afternoon. So we won't be able to get our telescopes here in the United States trained on it very well. We do have a radar facility in the Mojave Desert that will be tracking it just as it close, uh, does its close approach to the Earth and then on its way out. A lot of telescopes in Europe will be trained on this object to get a great scientific uh, data set for us. Okay, so we can't go out and actually look up and, and see it then? Unfortunately, no. But the good news is if you could see it, it would be much larger. <laughs> what are kind of some of the big things that you guys are really looking forward to here in the next uh, few years? Well, the president has outlined a vision to uh, extend human presence out of low Earth orbit, where the International Space Station is right now. And that includes the moon, near-Earth asteroids, and Mars. There's a variety of mission concepts that are under study right now. And the important thing is that we're developing the technologies and the developing the infrastructure to allow those missions uh, in the next decade or so. Absolutely. Very exciting event uh, all around. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. You have it. Exciting news. That's Absolutely. for sure for NASA and researchers everywhere. Now, Dr. Loretta tells me that NASA actually has a mission to another near-Earth asteroid scheduled for 2016. Now, that mission is called OSIRIS-REx. The asteroid is much larger than this one that's passing Earth this coming Friday. And so they'll go up there, they'll go explore it and try to understand its properties and try to track its orbit a little bit better so that hopefully they rule out any future potential impact with Earth. So, yeah, watching that, there. I was thinking, oh, I really want to see this thing pass no. by, but you bring up a good point. You don't no, want it to be that big. No, because then it's too big. Yeah, no, yeah. They, they think this isn't going to be big enough for us to see. Plus, it's going to pass during the daytime hours, right. so tough to look at. But you know what? Everybody is excited, including folks at the ASU's Earth uh, uh, School of Earth and Space Exploration. They'll be actually teaming up with U of A for the OSIRIS-REx mission in 2016. And researchers I spoke to tell me everyone at the school is very excited about it, and they're really just excited about the time we're in when it comes to space exploration and discovery. I think the time that we're living in right now as a whole, uh, where we're just completing the initial reconnaissance of the solar system using NASA spacecraft data, uh, trying to understand how all of the planets formed and how they all relate to each other is, is very exciting. And all of us who are faculty here, and plus all of our students, are really excited about the opportunities for exploring. Yeah, I bet. They're all ready yeah. to go. I mean, unfortunately, they're not going to be able to see it, but the data will come in after Friday's passing, and then they'll go over and analyze that one. Good thing it's not going to hit any satellites for our communications, and especially for your the radar. Weather satellites. That was my main <laughs> question. I was like, stay away from those.